Going forward with our program, we are joined by Mr. Roosevelt Wally Akasonso, who is a former addict of alcohol, who has been drinking for the past 15 years before he stopped, and gives us an insight of what led him to the decision of stopping until he became what he is today. Mr. Wally. Yes, Mr. T. Since when did you start drinking? Are you able to remember the year and when you decided to stop? Okay, so um, I started drinking when I was at school, when I was um, in grade 10, um, just out of peer pressure because of my friends that I was found with, they used to drink. So um, I felt I wanted to fit in, I wanted to be like them, so I started um, experimenting and drinking with them. Then from that same drinking, they progressed now, it became a comfortable habit. It was something that we enjoyed doing over the weekend. Then as the drinking continued, I now reached a stage where it became more like a coping skill. Um, for me to have, like, to have fun, I needed to maybe have one or a few drinks. When maybe I'm frustrated or I'm angered, again would resort to drinking. Then it progressed again into a stage where it's, I became dependent on alcohol, whereby when I wake up in the morning, uh, I wouldn't feel it's me, really. I would feel I would be shaking, I would be anxious. So um, the only thing that would be on my mind would be, where am I going to uh, get a drink? Where am I going to get some alcohol? Um, and sometimes when I had no money, I would even resort to selling things, selling things like clothes, selling things like shoes, um, selling things like phones. Um, so um, it really affected me in a lot of ways until later on in life, um, I became more on, I would say, my progress became slowed down due to the same alcohol abuse because I remember every time I would get a job, um, I would just work for maybe two or three months, then I would be fired just because of the, my drinking habits. So it really affected me then in my health again um, because I couldn't maintain proper self-care. So um, my appetite was all dependent on the alcohol and um, it was more of a priority for me. Uh, you can imagine if I have something like a 200 kwacha that I would have to spend on food. But if I go that I want to buy food, I would end, I would end up using maybe 150 on alcohol, then just a 50 kwacha reserved for food. So um, it took almost like everything. Um, I lost vision, I lost like goals. The only thing on my mind would be, how am I going to get high? Then the moment I started uh, realizing that um, this thing was really taking a hold on me, was um, I went into depression, whereby um, I started feeling, blaming other people around me for my own acts of indulging into alcohol. And I remember at that point, um, I once even uh, had suicidal thoughts. I thought uh, maybe um, just ending my life would be, um, would be the best thing to do because I had like no reason to, to keep on surviving. So um, after family realized and saw the way my life was going down, they thought, I know, this person actually needs uh, professional help. So um, that's how I was approached by my brother, my young brother, of course. Then he said, uh, the bro, I think maybe uh, we really need to help you with this. Don't you think um, it would be best if we checked into a rehab facility? So at first I was in that denial because um, I tried to compare myself and my situation to other people who are really worse than me. So um, again, I was like, what is this guy telling me? Because he's younger than me. Is he the one who should be advising me on my drinking? So um, again, it took time. I reflected on how low my life had gone. Then I pointed out certain things that most of the wrong things that had gone wrong in my life uh, was because of the alcohol. So again, there was sometimes 
something bad would happen to me, right? I would maybe find myself in the police cells. Then I would think, ah, maybe I need to do away with alcohol. It's because of this drinking that I'm here. Then I would stop for a few days, four days, but the moment I get frustrated, I get angered, I didn't know how to cope. So I would end up going to the bar. Uh, the moment I feel lonely, I would only find maybe comfort in the guys who are at the bar and I would go back to my drinking habits. So I decided to try it out. That's how I checked into rehab. Um, at first, I was in that denial stage and maybe I didn't know what to expect. So going through, going into rehab, um, I met other people because it was an in-house program uh, where I was admitted. So I met other people who were going through similar situations and we could relate. And then I found people who were even worse than me. So I thought, if these guys have really hit rock bottom, then I'm somewhere here. I think I wouldn't love to reach this other stage. So let me try to change and work on myself. Of course, it wasn't easy because um, rehabilitation is um, more of a process that you have to go through because you can imagine I spent about 15 years in this addiction. So my brain wiring, uh, even all the reward centers were uh, all influenced by my alcohol intake because um, I remember if I feel stressed, if I feel tired, the only thing on my mind would be for me to relieve this stress or to feel better, I think I need to go and drink some alcohol. And it was a lifestyle that I lived for 15 years plus. Even at night, I couldn't sleep because I would have insomnia if I haven't taken a bottle. So every time I wake up in the morning, my only plan and target would be I should get drunk by the time it's 19, 20 hours and I would strive to look for that money. If it's selling things, I would end up selling things. Um, so it became more of a process now of learning how to cope with this substance. And maybe uh, the advantage about the in-house program and how it helped me was I had no access to the alcohol because most of the time when I was home and I tried to stop, I would still f meet these friends who would offer me some alcohol again and I would end up drinking. So when I stayed into the in-house program, that was um, for about six months, um, I had no access to alcohol. Um, I underwent uh, therapy, I had a counselor who would talk to me and on different aspects of my life. And um, I learned so much that it's very possible uh, to live without uh, this alcohol. And, um, and I'd say here I am now, um, like two years down the line, and um, I'm now working at uh, Great Northwood Rehab Center. I'm helping out um, other addicts who are in recovery, trying to help them push through and recover. Okay. Yes. There are a number of people that might have, <coughs> excuse me, that have gone through similar ways, who yes. maybe started taking alcohol as uh, a recreational activity. Yes. And over time they decide to say, they're done with it at the time that they think they're or they feel they're abusing the substance yes. and they try to you know stop mm -hmm. uh, taking to quit alcohol they do maybe for a week or two mm -hmm. and time to time they find themselves reindulging yes. in the same vice how would you advise someone to you know okay completely what activities can they engage in instead to okay. maintain their quitting when they quit quit so should it be Okay, so for a person who's been an addict, an addict or who's been in addiction, um, they say recovery is a lifetime journey because no person is immune to problems, no person is immune to challenges. I think we all get frustrated, we all get disappointed, um, and we all get excited. So. Um, uh, the process is more of first, you have to be aware of yourself, you have to be aware of your triggers. What really leads you to go and drink? Is it your friends? Is it family? Um, is it emotions? Is it places? 
once you identify all those things then you are better place now to try to find that space where you can avoid it because they say the best reaction to your triggers always is to avoid your triggers if i know that going to a bar will trigger me to drink the first thing i should do is i should stop going to a bar if i know that a certain friend of mine when we are together the only thing that's on our mind when we meet is drinking alcohol then i think i should avoid that friend okay. if it's family members that trigger me to going into drinking i think it's better i set strong boundaries again it's those family members and i let it known to them that I'm no longer indulging because it now becomes a matter of prioritizing. You have to put what things you consider first in your life. What do you value most? So obviously the first thing that um, you should value most is your life, right? Because um, without your health, without good health, you are unable to function even uh, in workplaces or in other areas. So when it comes to a matter of values you know that the first value is my health the second value is my family the third value is my career those are things that you should protect and you should say when i drink this alcohol my behavior becomes destructive such that i don't care about my health i stop eating poor health care then um, my relationship with my family is ruined so i think that should give me a reason to stay away from this alcohol. So when I put my values first, then I'll, every time I think of indulging, I should think this thing is going to um, interfere with what I value most. Then, as I said, recovery is a lifetime process because uh, we meet challenges and we meet frustrations every day and we are disappointed every day. So it's a matter of knowing how to cope in times of stress. So if you feel maybe stress is the reason why you drink maybe that's uh, that's a coping strategy for stress then it's better now you learn how to cope without indulging if you feel maybe when i'm angered i always run off to the bar and drink then it's better now you know how to deal with your anger so that in, in that space where you're angered you will know that i shouldn't be pushed to going to reach for the bottle because i'm going back into that destructive lifestyle so many of the times that's why you find that people relapse then um, relapse itself is a process it's not more of an event that happens whereby somebody just finds themselves drunk after they had stayed maybe for two months without drinking but it's a process it's a process that's in three stages it first starts with an emotional stage so somebody may have been frustrated by an event and they feel uncomfortable within them so their feelings now will be preparing them for that relapse they will always want an escape for that then it then moves into the mental stage when it gets into the mental stage now there's a debate in your brain because you give yourself reasons why is it good to drink uh, then on the other end you give this yourself other reasons the disadvantages of drinking so there's that tug of war in your mind of what if i drank then you start even remembering past events when you are drinking and again some signs are you even start associating with those people who are actively indulging then you are moving in that mental stage of thinking of trying to drink then the physical just happens in a flip you don't take it doesn't take a lot of time for you to move on to the physical i just reach for the bottle and start drinking again because you've already progressed through this through three stages you've already gone through the emotional into the mental and now you just reach for the bottle and now it's physical okay. so that's the progression of um relapse okay. yes what uh, would you say was your greatest loss as a result of alcohol in the 15 years of indulgence um my greatest loss there have been a lot of losses actually because um, I would say my greatest loss was um, I think just for the 15 years that I spent in addiction I think I lost a lot of opportunities um, yeah I lost a lot of trust which I've earned obviously within the past few years that I've been sober and then it's sad to say I've lost friends who have gone down due to alcohol addiction i've lost uh, I, just last year i lost my cousin uh, he was abusing alcohol went into depression 
and nobody noticed it. He ended up committing suicide. Then the other year again, I also lost another close mate who went into depression and ended up committing suicide. So it really gets to that end where now people lose their lives. And sometimes people notice that this thing has a negative trend on me, then maybe I should stop. But they don't really get to the decision to just say, I've had enough of this, let me quit. Because they don't know how to cope without thing. And maybe sometimes the withdrawals will keep pulling them back. When they feel the hangover, when they feel they are shaking, they always feel the best way for me to move on is to maybe have a drink. So that's what keeps people uh, going back to drinking. Uh, yes. That we've heard from Mr. Walia, who calls himself a former addict, but a very uh, reformed person right now. He's actually a counselor at the Great North Rehab Center. He has given us his past, his experience for, uh, of drinking in the past 15 years, his losses and what he has learned, and of course, a word of encouragement to those of you that might be struggling with addiction. He tells us to say there are so many ways, the emotional, the mental, and of course the physical aspects. It's about learning who you are and maybe always looking for a listening ear next to you for help. We are Let's Work Africa because that's what we are known for. We do not have a choice.